welcome to this Stateless Code cast. In this video, we're going to start a series on making our own Ruby gem. So we're going to go to rubygems.org here. Uh, gems are a form of plugin used in the Ruby ecosystem that allow you to include the same functionality and share across multiple projects the same types of uh, a functionality so examples of gems you can see here some of the most popular ones rspec which is a ruby testing framework you've got bundler which causes you to uh, it, what interprets your gem file and compiles the manifest of the the plugins that you use in a ruby project uh, those plugins are known as gems we have rack which is used for um, usually server development rake which is a make like program for ruby so all of these are commonly used ruby gems and we're going to go and make our own yeah, so we're gonna uh, take a look so ruby gems has guides here and i recommend that you go and read through them. It has uh, good definitions about what is a gem, how to make your own gem, security practices, patterns, the specification reference. So I would definitely recommend if you're going to do this yourself, go and read through the guides here. Now when it goes to make your own gem, I would actually recommend looking at the bundler guide for creating your own Ruby gem with bundler rather than the, uh, the Ruby gems guide for it. The Ruby gems guide has a lot of good um, material on it about the overall Ruby gems ecosystem, but bundler, instead of going in manually making all these files, you follow along with, with the guide here. So that's what we're going to do. Our gem is going to be known as nerd dice. We're starting from scratch here. Normally, what you do is you you work on a project and you find that you've got functionality. You start it starts out in maybe your your model directory and then you decide that it can be reusable, so you move it to the lib directory of your project and then you decide, hey, this could be useful in other projects, and that's when you would go in and kind of extract a gem out of an existing project. Uh, in this case, we're going to go and we're going to create a gem from scratch, but we'll wind up including it in some of our future projects. So we're going to, to follow along here. I'm going to pull up my terminal, get to and we're going to use the same command here, bundle, helps if I spell it right, gem nerd dice. I'm going to check, make sure that it's available here. I did yesterday, just making sure that it hasn't changed since then. So no, no gems found, so I can use that. I've got a unique name here. And go back to our terminal, and we'll hit enter here. So I'm actually going to, so let me go back. It did some automatic stuff here. So I'm going to go back a directory and um, it'll save defaults in your, in your home directory. So we're going to see. So um, right now we've got Defaults here, bundle, RSpec, bundle with MIT, and bundle with code of conduct. So we're going to modify this to get rid of it so that we can see. Back here, we're going to get rid of nerd dice for a second here. So. And try it again. Bundle gem nerd dice. 
So it will ask you some questions here. So it lets you choose what your uh, test files are, uh, RSpec, mini test, or none. We're going to go with RSpec in this project. Usually, I, I, I haven't been, I've been using mini test most recently. It's been a while since I've used RSpec, but if you're going to develop in the Ruby ecosystem, it's going to be versed in both RSpec and mini test. They're both used fairly frequently. Mini test is the default in Ruby on Rails applications, and uh, RSpec is more of a uh, behavior driven development paradigm. So we'll, we'll use RSpec for this gem. And then we're going to, they give you the option to do MIT here. We'll wind up um, modifying this after we generate, but we will dual license our project under both MIT and the unlicensed. At some point in the future, I'll uh, maybe do a cast about my reason reasoning for doing this and kind of talking some about licensing both with uh, your software licensing and uh, copyright licensing or lack thereof. So we're going to choose this. And then there is a note about the code of conduct. We're going to definitely choose no here. I have a another video if you search for burn the contributor covenant with fire. Uh, that'll be kind of a re front, some of the reason for why we, we don't do that. I'll include my burn the contributor covenant with fire file in this repository. So if we look now, we've got our di our directory here, nerd dice. And if we execute the tree command, it will show you what you've got here. So you've got by default when you did the bundle gen command, it creates a bunch of files for you. And the directory of these things is important. So in your lib directory, you want only the name of your gem, so um, nerd dice, and then all of the files in there will be uh, in a subdirectory of your lib directory called nerd dice. So by default, you have a version.rb file. Uh, and then this is your, your bin directory where you have your, your executables, if any, uh, for the gem. You have a uh, license.txt, your gem spec, which we'll take a look at, uh, rake file, and your readme. So we'll take a look at this in VS Code and open this directory. We've got our nerd dice directory here. We're going to hit OK. And you can see essentially the tree that we had there. So you can get a default uh, item here. We've got the generated version of the MIT license. It notes that it kind of automatically pulled in my, my name here. Um, and again, I'm, I'm opposed to copyright, but some people don't find the unlicensed enforceable in their jurisdiction. So I, I'm going to dual license this under both the, uh, the unlicensed and, um, and the, um, the MIT license. So uh, that'll be, so we're going to add in a couple other files here. So I'm going to, copy over burn the contributor covenant with fire so we've got that now and then we want to also copy over the unlicensed. And I think I've got that in another directory. I'll just pause for a second and find it. So I find it. I'm going to copy it so um, so that we've got an unlicensed.txt here. And 
now we've got license.txt, unlicensed.txt. And then in our gem spec now, we need to go in, if I were to go console here, it's going to fail because I have some to-do things before I can even start working on my gem that I need to um, define in my gem spec. So here are the errors. Um, so it's telling me that I've got some invalid speci specifications. So that will be what we do next is we go in to our gem spec so we have nerd dice dot gem spec here let me see if i can zoom in on this at all doesn't look like i can so by default it's got a lot of stuff here um, I'm going to put the stateless code public email here. So we've got a to do here for the summary and the description. And we've got a home page. We're going to make the home page our GitHub address we're going to put this in the stateless code user so if we go over to github we'll go and create an empty repository nerd dice gem or will also work for our summary here. Go back to GitHub. Make this a public repo. I'm not going to add readme. Um, We will we'll add a a git ignore here. So and then we're gonna I guess we'll be okay with main here. So create this repository. We have an initial um, commit here, so we're going to need to add our origin both to the I'm going to make this binder bin. And then we had 
a home page. This is where we're going to to add that in. Go to our I think there's any get status yet. Oh, there is a get status. But there are not any commits yet. So we're going to pull in remote add origin dot get. So we had a git ignore file created by default here. So I'm going to keep that one. And back here and just finish the so we're going to go into lib nerd dice version 0 0.1.0 that's what we want here and we'll just make this our initial commit and we'll force push to origin main So we've got our commit message here. We're going to pause and sign the commit, and then we'll push it to the origin, and we'll pick things up in the next video. So, so we've got our commit here. You now see in the log, we've got our commit message. got master branch we'll see what happens I'll call this So we'll go take another look back at GitHub. So we've got main and we've got master. We're just going to delete main. We're going to go 
back into the So when we attempted to delete main here, it rejected it. So let's go into the repo settings. And branches. Default branch is going to be master. I understand one commit deep so it doesn't doesn't matter now I should be able to go back in the repo and delete main and go back to here and we just have the one branch which is what we want we'll pick up in the next video where we uh, we go in and uh, start uh, fleshing out our our gem. Thanks for watching this stateless codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.